Our guests right now join us on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone lines, played with well, at least one pretty good quarterback. Guy who was an 11-year NFL vet, two-time Super Bowl champ, Super Bowl MVP, and now, I think most importantly, an unbeaten college head coach, Dion Branch, is with us, Dion. It, it's Tom Pelissero. I There's a lot I want to talk to you about, but first of all, take me through the process by which you end up being the interim head coach for your alma mater, Louisville. And not only that, getting a win to go to 1-0 and all time. Uh, correct. Tom, I appreciate you guys for having me. Uh, the AD, Josh Hurd, reached out to me and um, extended the, the offer once Coach Satterfield decided to take the Cincinnati job. Uh, you know, he reached out and extended the offer. At first, I was like, no, honestly, and, and the reason being is because we we have we got ten uh, staff members that are coaches that are super qualified for the job. But I also understood the process that Josh and the selection committee went through, and the, the reason why they came in, came up with the decision to elect me. Uh, I think once that happened, it was a no brainer. Once we had that conversation and talked talked that out, uh, I, I and primarily I was just thinking about those young men, knowing that had I told these guys I turned this opportunity down, they would have been pissed. <laughs> you know, I've been actually been the player development for the university the, the past 11 months, and I've gotten to know these young men on a strong, strong level, uh, strong intimate level, and I know they would have been super proud of me, and, and they're super happy that I did take upon this opportunity to be the interim head coach for them. It's the Fenway Bowl. That was the game that that you coached in. And it's the only time I can really remember where the head coach has left to join the other team that you're facing in the bowl (laughs) game. On top of that, I mean, this is the keg of nails, right? This is a this is a rivalry game. I have to imagine this meant a lot to you. Oh, it meant a lot to me. You know, planning, planning, coaching this game for one back in Fenway in Boston uh, in the rivalry game. You know, I played against Cincinnati twice. We beat them both times coached against them once and we beat them again so everything was aligned for it to end the way that it ended you know the guys did an amazing job uh all we can practice the coaches did a phenomenal job the three full-time staff coaches that stayed back and then we i had a bunch of gas and qcs who filled in the void for the other coaches that left uh i can't extend my gratitude for the the amount of work that those individuals put in to help me keep those young men locked in and prepared to get to go out and play this game to play the bowl game uh saturday i can't thank those guys enough um and i pray and wish that all my coaches that was on board actually have the opportunity to get another job and i think for the most part some of those guys are actually getting picked up so i'm super proud for 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 the coaches and their families I went to Boston College, so I've been to a, a number of, of Red Sox games through the years. And every time that they have this game at Fenway, all I can think, Dion, is I don't understand how the field fits. Now, I, I know that there's only one sideline, <laughs> right? And there's police between the right. two teams. It, it, it's unlike any other setting. But I, I, like, I, I sit back and just go, they had to have shorted it, right? This field has to be four yards slimmer or not, it only 95 yards long, something to make that thing fit in that stadium. Yeah, and, and you know what? They did an amazing job with um, structuring the, the field. Actually, the turf was amazing. Uh, everything was great. And the, the configuration, how they did it, it, it aligns. The only thing that was different was us being on the same sideline. You know, that is the only thing that was sort of weird. But in my entire uh, Bill Belichick mode that I was actually doing the entire two weeks at the hem, I was making sure that I had our guys prepared for that type of uh, setting. You know, because it's a little different substituting guys than you going across the field. You know, you may be on one end, but your defense is subbing from the opposite end. So we were well prepared. We, we practiced this stuff for two weeks. Um, and it, it looked as if Cincinnati did an amazing job as well preparing for it. That was the only thing that was weird. But as far as the layout, the configuration of everything, the, the surface, everything was great. I feel like you say you went into Belichick mode with your personality, Dion. I don't know that you could ever go full Belichick. I know I can't go full Belichick, but I, as far as the preparation, you know, I understand what it's like being under coach for, for numerous years. I spent eight years with him and I've always felt, and, and, and I'll speak this biasly. We were the most prepared team every week that we played against anybody. And that was simply because of the work that we put in throughout the course of the week before the games. 
And the only thing I did was just implement most of that, everything that the coaches have taught me, all of my coaches, and but in particular Coach Belichick, within uh, those two weeks, I gave those guys everything that I had. That's been such a huge part of the Patriot way for so long, Dion, for, for two decades now is – they're always the team that's not going to beat themselves. They're going to wait you out, Correct. make you win left-handed, and then make the other team beat themselves. So when you when you watch this season, and in particular something like what happened on the final play last week against the Raiders, where you know Jacoby Myers is trying to turn this into a lateral play and throws, I don't even know what you call it, an interception basically, and Chandler Jones runs right. 50 yards. What, what goes through your head – thinking that this is the Patriots that just had that happen to them. Yeah. Uh, even even seeing that and how everything transpired, how that whole setting played out, that, was, that wasn't that was actual the Patriot way. That, you know, going into the last play of the game, uh, it, this wasn't like it was a Hail Mary. Right. This was something they, they was trying to draw in, the, you know, draw in the dirt to see if we can get in field goal range. Chances of that play actually, what they call it, Tennessee did it, and it was a miracle with them. That's the only time it was successful. Um, the, the percentages of this play being successful is very low. So that's the first thing. I don't know who or why that even came about. I'm pretty sure Coach had to address that and then come up with the answer on why they came, tried to do that. That's something. But it was totally against the, the norm for any player that have played for New England or been around that program. That was something that I just didn't I was, – it was mind-boggling. I met that These guys, the game is tied, and you can go into halftime – I mean, go into overtime. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. I, don't I, get it. I, I imagine you still watch the Patriots quite a bit. I mean, the, the struggles they've had on offense. Mac Jones is very outwardly frustrated about a lot of different things that are going on. What, what What's happening right now in New England, Dion? Correct. Uh, honestly, let's be honest. It is the writing's on the wall. I mean, losing for one. Let's just say that. You, you get what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, the thing is, I don't foresee the leaders. Who are the leaders on the team? You, you get what I'm saying. That's mm-hmm. the part I'm, I'm noticing, and I, I think this is a young team. And I think the, the younger guys are actually the ones who are taking more control of the team versus your veteran guys. You know, the Matthew Slaters and and the Devin McCourty. Those are the guys who who needs to be in charge, and I and I want to believe that those guys have been trying, but the, you kind of get it. It's, it's almost like when you're being led by a bunch of young men who actually doesn't have the experience uh, of of actually leading. You know, I'm not saying Mac Mac Jones is not a leader, but when you're looking at a scenario that plays out on, you know, Mac is over there fussing and stuff and doing all the extra stuff with the coaches. That's unpatriot life. Yeah. Are you, know, you, so. are, are you surprised that, that Mac is even still starting at this point, Dan? Because, you know, Tom was very emo, or he still is, he's still playing very emotional, but a lot of it is directed at teammates to try to, you teammates. know, fire them up and get them to lock in. It's not directed at the play calling or the coaches, which is at what coach. seems to be happening with Mac. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and I'm pretty sure Mac is a little frustrated with his performance. You know, I'm sure yeah. he's not performing as well as he would have thought he would be doing this season. So that that could be one thing. But the thing is, you can't be lashing out at your coaches. And, you know, for the most part, you don't be lashing out at your teammates either. But it's understood. Um, that is just, just being competitive and everything. I, But as far as him playing and why he's still starting, uh, honestly, right now, I think that the, the, the coaches feel that Matt gives them the best chance to win the game. Um, I don't know. I can't say who's the backup, but, you know, or, or if Zeppi is, is that guy. You, you get what I'm saying? Right. I, I wouldn't sit and say that, hey, Zeppi has shown them enough or if they feel like he hasn't. You know, that's not my decision. A few more minutes here with Dion Branch. Uh, Bill Belichick's 70 years old now, Dion. Uh, he's obviously had unparalleled success in the NFL. All the rings going back to his days uh, with the Giants. Uh, how, how do you foresee, knowing Bill as well as you do and spending as much time with him, h- how does it end for him? Does he does he walk away? Does he do what Bill Parcells did and go into a front office role at some point? Like How, how, does, how does Bill Belichick right. as the head coach of the Patriots end? Yeah, I can I can foresee uh, Coach Belichick taking that route. Um, you know, 
retiring but also still having his his hand right uh within the organization i could see that 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 would be something that i'm sure you know coach belichick and mr Kraft will sit down and talk about and discuss here pretty soon i i don't think coach is going to sit around and and watch this right here happen i think he'll rather step to the side and allow mr Kraft to bring someone else in to see if they can kind of spearhead some of this stuff but he'll still have his hand within the organization and help him making some decisions um that that's that's my opinion, um, and I think that'll be a great choice. I think that'll be a great choice for the organization. But how long do I think Bill will probably stay around and continue being the head coach? Uh, who knows? Um, he made this wait around just to see if he can get this thing turned around for the guys, in which I believe they will at some point, maybe another year or two, and then he can possibly hang it up from that, especially being on the sideline. And as for your old quarterback, Tom Brady, how, do, how does that end? Will it ever end? Is Tom Brady going to still be playing at, at age 50? What, 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 do you, what do you foresee with him? <laughs> hey, everybody asks me, man, you just never know with my big brother, man. Tom is, um, is a man of many tricks and trades. Who knows? Knowing Tom, it wouldn't surprise me if he came back another season. You know, right now that deal with that he has with Fox that's sitting on the table, it's just on the table right now. Mm-hmm. My guy, he has his mind set on something, something totally different from what we're thinking. Everybody's like, Tom, you know, you know, we, when we do speak, it's never about football and all of these things. It's always just about family and how you're doing X, Y, Z. You know, but me personally, I always ask my like, Tom, what are you chasing? Because you're by yourself in every record that you want that you can think of. You're by yourself. What else are you chasing? You know, uh, greatness has already have already been accomplished. You're already the greatest. You get what I'm saying? Uh, but I honestly believe that this may be it, in my opinion. I think he will just set off in the sunset, spend way more time with his family, and, 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 and he'll be done. I think he'll be done. But it wouldn't surprise me if he came back one more season. When you've asked him, what is he still chasing? What does he say? What What is left uh, for him? Uh, it, it just laughs because I mean he knows there's nothing for him. There's nothing out there for him to chase. Only thing he's doing is setting the bar even higher. And and I understand him on the competitive side. You know when you you look at a guy who was drafted when he was drafted, who has always been denied and told that you can't do something, you got to do it. You know I think he's just putting these records away. You know he's pushing the bar, and and that that comes with uh, a great immense of discipline. And, and and he has that. You know, now how long he's going to do it, I don't know. Like I said, it wouldn't surprise me, but I, I believe deep down inside this may be his last season, in my opinion. But it wouldn't surprise me if he came back for one more. Bill Belichick, career winning percentage, by the way, 664, 0.664, Dion Branch, 1,000. May want to leave it at that, Dion. I'm right. just saying, I don't know if opportunity may arise somewhere down the line, but we appreciate you joining, man. Great catching up with you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.